Hi there, I'm Graham Jackson. I've been overlanding for all of my life. And in this video, I'm going to discuss what overlanding actually is. After all, we're all doing this, we're all partaking in this big thing, but a lot of people, especially those of you who are new to this, may not know exactly what overlanding is and how it differs from all the other things out there, road tripping and van life and all of the other things that people are doing and all of the other buzzwords that are out there. I want to go back and just start at the very beginning and the very basics. I started the um, Wikipedia page on overlanding back in 2008. And so as a semi-authority on what to talk about here, I just have to say, in my view, overlanding involves remote travel and it's travel where the travel itself is the goal of what you're doing, right? So in a lot of cases, you can travel to a, a specific national park or something like that. And that's more sort of what a vacation is, right? A vacation is when you go from point A to point B, you've got a destination in mind, and you're going to go and enjoy that destination and then go home. For overlanding, it's much more about the in between parts, right? You may have a specific place that you're headed to. You might be going to Yellowstone, you might be doing something like that, but the journey to get there is a major, major part of the trip and probably part of your focus in, in, in the travel. So think of it as, I don't know, the travel is the destination. The travel is the goal. And that's kind of encompasses what overlanding is. And so how does that differ from a road trip, you might say? Well, a road trip, typically, if I say I'm gonna take a road trip to Vegas, I'm probably gonna stay on the highway or at least B roads. I'm gonna be on the tarmac most of the time. I might be staying at motels, that sort of thing. Overlanding differs from that in that a lot of it is going remote. So we'll take remote windy dirt roads. We'll take, we'll go into places where there aren't very many people, hence remote, and that involves a whole bunch of new things. So it involves the ability to camp, to have all your own food with you, to be able to travel in a remote area, so therefore be trained to use a four-wheel drive vehicle. Uh, so those are the sort of quintessential ingredients that will come into overlanding and makes it different from the other things that I've mentioned. The other thing about overlanding is that it's not necessarily about conquering terrain or driving in the most difficult places that you can find. It's more going out, enjoying nature for what nature is, loving the environment that you're in, being very respectful for the environment you're in. And I think almost to a person, the overlanders that I've met kind of don't like other people. So they want to get away from other people. And a lot of the goal is to, as I said, go remote for the very sake of getting the heck away from humanity. So in my view, that sort of sums up what overlanding is. It's a broad church. There are lots of different ways to overland. And in fact, uh, Nick Taylor, who's one of my compatriots in the company that I work with, uh, came up with the accidental overlander. And this, you might resonate with this if you are, say, a kayaker or a mountain biker or somebody who likes to go rock climbing. So you go to remote areas to partake in those hobbies, but you're, the going to the remote area is the overlanding part. And then the hobby, when you get there, is, is sort of your goal. So that makes you an, an accidental overlander, in our opinion. The other one that we came up with, I think it was at Overland Expo West this past year, was the commuting overlander. So there's a young lady who likes to live in Flagstaff, but she works in Phoenix. Uh, she doesn't like to live in Phoenix in the summer for obvious reasons. And so she transits back and forth between Flagstaff and Phoenix. And when she gets to Flag, she's driving around on the remote forest roads, trying to find a place to camp in her bus. and we coined the term commuting overlander for her. So there are lots of different ways to overland. There are lots of different places to overland. Obviously, in my opinion, I usually like to go across international borders when I'm overlanding. So I, I take the sort of grand view of going around the world. But 
You can do it in the United States, you can do it any, in any country in the world, and you can do it around the world and through multiple countries for as far as you want to go, because the world is a massive place and there's so much of it to see and enjoy. So hopefully that gives you a good idea about what overlanding is, but that's not all of it. Come to Overland Expo, go to overlandexpo.com to learn a lot, lot more about what this broad church covers. And the more you know, the more fun you'll have out in the world.